Hi, this is Toby from Let's Tech Mobility, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing our SmartShare One and SmartShare One XL. If people come to us and go, I want a really diverse chair, great for indoor, great for outdoor, uh, we'll probably put them in the direction of the SmartShare One or One XL, depending on their height and weight, um, and maybe add some add ons depending what their use case is. Obviously, if people want to be a little bit more indoor, we'll probably keep with the smaller 7 inch wheels. Um, if we want to go outdoor, multi-terrain, then it's kind of a must and you've got to go for the bigger spongier front wheels. So there's no difference in these designs other than the SmartShare One XL has got more space between the armrests. Um, the way they perform, the capabilities, everything about them is identical. So the SmartShare One XL has got 53 centimetres between the uh, armrests. And the smart chair one has got 48 centimeters between the armrests. Um, this would suit someone that is maybe, let's say they're five foot eight, six foot, whatever. Um, and for a gentleman, they maybe say 15 stone plus. Um, or if you're a woman, if you're a bit smaller, uh, and you weigh a little bit less, you're probably looking sort of 11 stone, 12 stone up, depending on your height. If you're taller, you probably want to go for the one with spaces or one. And if you're a little bit shorter and you weigh that kind of weight, you want to be certainly looking at the One uh, XL. Reason being is you've got crossbars here. It's these crossbars that cut into people's hips. It's just a fact of life that a lot of women tend to grow outwards at your hips. Guys tend to grow outwards with our tummies, probably because we drink too much beer. But there's also genetical reasons as well. Um, what you also want to always allow is you want to allow a finger at least for a coat. So in the winter, you don't want to be... Um, refined to being all kind of hunched up and it pinching um, and not have any room for a coat. And the idea, whole idea of these chairs is you want to be comfortable. What you also have to bear in mind, the widest point on this chair, if you take a straight ruler down, it's, this is bang in line with your wheel arches and your rear wheels. So the widest point on either of these chairs is going to be 59 centimetres, wheel arch to wheel arch. On the smart chair one, your armrests come inside the wheels. On your smart chair one XL, your armrests come bang in line with the wheels. So your folding dimension is going to be the same. Your um, your space for going through doorways is going to be the same. XL doesn't necessarily mean it's a bigger chair. It just means it supports someone that needs a wider seat. So what we're going to do as these chairs, like I've said, are completely identical. They perform the same way. We're going to discard the XL now. We're just going to talk through the smart chair one because they've got exactly the same features and then we're actually going to take the smart chair one outside. So I'm going to get rid of this, fold it up nice and quick, and I'm going to roll it away. That was easy, wasn't it? I'm just going to stick it out the way over here. Okay. Right, let's discuss the smart chair one. So we kind of discussed the type of user this is for. Uh, you want to be really between kind of five foot and um, about six foot four in this chair. If you are on the taller side, what we'd have to do is we'd get rid of this and we'd put a wraparound backrest on that's going to support the whole of your back. We'd have to have a higher cushion and we're going to go for a telescopic foot plate. The telescopic foot plate is basically a foot plate. At level one, it mimics this, and then you'd pull out two little uh, bits here, and the foot plate, or the, this kind of goes inside and it pulls out. Level two extends to about here, and level three extends all the way out here. If one has a longer leg, you have no option but to go for a higher seat and a longer foot plate and then you need to compensate by going for a wraparound back press and that's going to give you the support higher up your back where you're going to need it. Um, this train type, if you go for the upgraded front wheels, which is, I'd say 90% of our customers go for the upgraded front wheels, uh, it means you can then do grass, fields in the summer if it's not too bumpy, um, cobbles, unmade up paths, dog walking paths, um, your, your local streets and pavements. Um, Basically everywhere except for loose, deep gravel. No wheelchairs like loose, deep gravel. It's, it's very difficult. Unless you're going very, very, very fast, you don't really have the momentum. You will just kind of stop and dig yourself in. Right, let's, um, let's run through. I'll tell you what, another person that this chair will suit, and we actually pitched this on our website as the traveler's choice. Great for cruises, great for flying. Reason being, it's incredibly compact. It's actually the lightest aluminium multi-terrain chair on the market. You'll get other ones that say they're lighter, but they're actually not, once you include the batteries. Um, it's great for cruises because it's very compact. It's incredibly manoeuvrable. You know, they all spin on their own axis, whatever. Um, very, very um, manoeuvrable. They've got brushless motors, so 
that makes the response time very, very quick. Um, but also, you've got a nice capable chair. You've got 12 and a half inch solid rubber tyres, no chance of getting any punctures. These tyres mimic the properties of a pneumatic tyre, which are the pump up ones, as much as possible, but with no chance of ever getting a puncture. I don't actually understand pneumatic tyres with a disability disabled crowd because the last thing you want is when you're out and about, if you are vulnerable, is to get a puncture and be stuck in the middle of nowhere with a puncture. It's not ideal. Um, we've got an uh, 8 inch spongy front wheel um, at the front. Also, I forgot to mention the back wheel's rubber. Most companies use what's called PU, it's polyurethane, it's a rubbery, plasticky composite. It's um, not very hard wearing, it's very slippy, doesn't usually have much tread in it, um, and yeah, the, yeah they, they wear out very quickly. These will last you a flipping lifetime, and they're incredibly gripping. Right, let's talk in, which is great, so when you're on the cruises and things like that, so I've lost my train of thought, it's very, very good for going to your, when you're going off the ship and you're going to, you're going to be going over rough terrain, sometimes a cold, you might be going, um, you know, unmade up paths. It just means that when you're out, you're not restricted by the terrain type that this can handle. Great on the ship, great off the ship. Anyway, got a little bit, uh, lost my train of thought there. Okay, let's have a look at the folding and unfolding. So the easiest way to fold and unfold these chairs is by doing it with the motors locked out. That means the chair's in a stationary mode. It's a self-lock, ignore these loose leads by the way, all of our demo models are like this, which means we never know if we're gonna get a righty or a lefty in um, for demos. If we've got a righty in, we can just quickly stick the joystick that side. If we've got a lefty in, we can quickly stick the joystick that side. It saves a lot of faff, a lot of time, and me doing up and undoing a million cable ties. Right, self-locking chair. So that means when the chair goes down, it locks itself into place. A very good feature because it's less faffy, it's quicker, looks better, and I've never ever seen one of these catches come undone. So we'll talk about folding now. So when you fold a chair, you actually want to stand behind the chair and always to the side. The last thing you want to do when folding a chair is stand behind, push that forward, especially for customers with bad balance where they've got MS, something like that, uh, fibromyalgia, and they're not, not strong in the legs, they're going to go forward. You want to always maintain your balance. You want everything to be done in a methodical and smooth and um, safe way. Right, stand to the side and back, release a little bit of tension on the clip, push it forward. That's all you need to do. Lots of people try and push it to the floor, it's no need. You're now going to grab the heavy bit of the chair, bring it back, so now the weight of the chair is all the way back. And you can just bring, or the wheel's caught, you can just bring your hands together. If I'd done that a bit quicker and smooth, it would have come back much nicer. So I'll do it again actually, just because that looked a little bit ropey. So one, two, Three, four, back down five. Incredibly quick, incredibly easy. And the wheelchair ends up bang in the middle of where I am. If I'm gonna do the reverse process of that, we're gonna put the foot plate forward. We're now gonna to stand to the side, but in front of it. So that means by the time the wheelchair tips forward, which is then gravity is gonna open it up, all I have to do is give it a little helping hand. And again, the wheelchair ends up bang in the middle of me. So I'm gonna do it once more, but then I'm gonna show you a different way of folding it. By unfolding it, sorry. So one, Two, three, four, five, done. Real simple. Um, if you've got a disability which affects your balance, this might be an easy way. Um, plus, it's very easy anyway. I mean, I could literally do, I could do it with my little finger. It's very, very easy. However, most people will not be doing it with their little finger, so let's show you the proper way. Right, reverse grip, thighs touching, so you've got lots of leverage. And this is now gonna end you up in the most stable position known to mankind. I've now got complete and utter control. I'm very, very stable. Even if I've got wobbly legs, we're, we're comfortable, we're safe. That's the main point. I'm big on safety, everyone knows that. Right, uh, let's go to the motors now. So we've got two and a, 250 watt brushless motors. Um, brushless is great because it means that your reaction time for changing direction is much quicker. Um, the quality of the motors in general are going to be better. But mainly, most of all, brushless means when you have activated free wheel mode by tapping those toggles forward with your feet, your hands, whatever, it's now a very free running chair. Um, so if you had a, uh, a lower quality chair, like all the ones that cost about uh, 850 pound, 1000 pound, up to 1500 quid, they're gonna come with brushless motors. That means your resistance is gonna be um, very large. That means pushing it up a ramp into the boot of your car is gonna be a huge struggle. It means if you wanna push 
um, a loved one, your partner in it, it's going to be a huge struggle because you've not only got the weight of the user, the weight of the chair, you've also got to push against the resistance of the motors. You want things to be as simple and as light and easy breezy as possible. Also it means that a lot of your customers, you're going to use this like a walker, like a stroller. You're going to walk behind it. And the last thing is you want, if, if you're quite frail or if you're rehabilitating, is to be pushing the full weight of the chair. You want it just to roll whilst you walk along with you. Okay. So that's your motors. Let's touch on the batteries. Right, your batteries are located here. You've got two times, one, two, six AH, that's 144 watts, that's two, uh, 144 watt, and they're 24 volt um, batteries. These are air compliant on every single airline. And you've got a uh, little battery certificate, so if you, Look at this, you've got your 24 volt, 6 AH, 144 watt. If you're ever flying, take a picture of that and send it to your airline, they'll love you. It makes your, their, their life easier, it makes your life easier. Everyone knows what they're doing. Um, right, so I could, just like I did then, take the batteries out from a lower down position. We like to make our lives as easy as possible here at Lift Tech, so a more practical way to take them out would probably be from up here. By taking them out from a higher position, we now have the batteries in line with our pelvis. Also means that they've got little clips here. You can actually see where the clip is now. So what it actually means I can do is I can use my thumb to push in whilst pulling out. So what I'm actually doing is I'm pushing that in flush, which then gets caught when it goes back in on that lip. You've got two charging options on this chair. One is through the battery. That will charge the battery off the chair. If you charge one battery at a time off the chair, you're looking at about five hours per battery. If you charge both batteries on the chair together through the portal in the joystick, which I'll get out for you now, you're going to be, so you've got your joystick portal, you're looking at about um, eight hours fully, or seven to eight for a full charge from a full drain, or about five to six for a 90% drain, which is really what we should do. When we use, I'll tell you what, let me plug this in. I'm actually, oh, let's hope I can do this. I've got a knife. Ah, oh, it's a knife. Let me see if I can pop it open with some keys with me. I'm a righty. Whoever's in this last one's a lefty. Right, I need to get a flathead screw. Oh, it. Right. So, so, if you want to charge the batteries on the chair, it is literally just done through the joystick. Right, let's just unfold this. To attach the joystick to the chair, all you do is you line up your white arrows, push in, twist forward to make a secure connection. If you can still pull, that means you've not got a secure connection. So if I've done that and I've pushed it in, but I'm not twisted or I've half twisted and pull, actually that's not supposed to happen, and pull, that's not a secure connection. It's in, push and twist. If you've got a longer reach, you can have that further forward. If you've got a longer arm, if you want a shorter reach, you have it further back. I have it about here. So when we look at the batteries, the, ideally when you should be charging, and obviously never ever leave yourself short. If you know you've got a big day out the next day, like you're going to Legoland, or you're out with the kids, whatever, make sure you're fully charged. But in an ideal world, you want to drain your battery 90%. That usually means charging the battery when it's somewhere in that last yellow, or when you're in that red. Um, on some of the newer chairs, it's all just green or yellow, so you want to be charging either on the last two icons. That's what's called a 90% drain. That's what will give your batteries the best memory, the best life, um, and it's the best charging protocol. Um, in the middle, we've got your horn. They're all quite feeble, not going to lie, but they've done the job. This side, you've got your speed. These chairs are programmed to 0.5 miles an hour, and at top speed, you're just under four. Um, it's just literally a smidge under four. Um, easiest way of controlling these and holding these is creating a V or a Y, and then that middle bit cuts straight through the middle of your finger and you point that, a bit like an arrow. Um, another way you can hold it is like that. Whatever you do, don't hold it up the top. This top bit is three times more sensitive than here. So if you start trying to hold it like that or like that, you're gonna be all over the place and it's gonna be incredibly hard to control it. All right, I'll show you different ways of getting in and getting out. Um, the, chair, the cushion that this chair comes with as standard is a two and a half inch thick um, cushion, foam cushion, 
Um, it's okay. It's um, it's fine in general, but I personally would. I'm only five foot nine, uh, nine as we call it, five foot ten. I would need to sit myself up a bit. Ideally, I want to be about there. I also, if I was going to buy this chair for myself, would opt for the telescopic footplate because I've got quite long feet, um, and I personally prefer my feet and knees and legs extended more, so I don't have to feel crammed or um, can't compromised in any way. I like to be comfortable. So for this demo, I'm going to go out in our upgraded cushion. This is a three to three and a half inch uh, contoured, nice spongy foam cushion. Um, and that's going to be much better. I'm not going to bother putting on the telescopic foot plate because it's unnecessary. So uh, just for the demo, three ways of getting in and out. Way number one, if you're lucky enough to have the mobility, we can step over the foot plate, finding the armrest, never ever put your hand and rest it on the joystick. We're going to find the armrest and sit down and then place our feet on the foot plate. Way number two from the front is we put the foot plate up, back on into it. Once your feet get to here, you can almost slump back into the chair knowing nothing's gonna move. And these chairs are incredibly strong. I'm bouncing up and down, putting my whole weight on it, and I'm about 13 and a half stone, and it's not going anywhere. It's stable, you know, it's good, good build quality. Talking about build quality, on a chair that's got good build quality, there is no need for anti-tip wheels, which are the tiny little training wheels that usually come off the side on your, base, on your um, entry level models. Entry level models have them because the build quality is subpar. By having anti-tip wheels means you can't go up and down curves properly, you can't reverse up a curb, meaning you have to, you're limited to drop curves. With these chairs, you can reverse up half curves. If you had those anti-tip little wheels there, they would just hit the curb, so you wouldn't actually be able to go up them. So you're limited to quarter and drop curbs. Um, they get caught in potholes and rough terrain, and they're a faff when you're folding and unfolding the chair, meaning it takes much longer. It's not as smooth, and they get in the way. Right, another way of getting in and out is from the side. This is incredibly popular with a lot of customers because it means you can keep the foot plate down. How you do this is on the armrest, you've got to catch up for up, down for down. Up for up, down for down. If we want to lock it out completely so we can put a bit of weight on it, we bring it all the way back so it locks. So now I can get in from the side, find my armrest, lower myself into my chair, and at this point, if it's locked, you have to then push from the join. You won't just go down by itself. You have to push from the join. And that means I've kept the foot plate down, it's less faff. But the best thing about that is, on the way out, you've got a high point of leverage, meaning that I've got something to push up against. It's like using a crutch or someone to help pull you up. High point of leverage for getting out of the chair is always beneficial. Right, enough talk. Let's go out and put this chair into practice. Let me just quickly double check what this chair is programmed to, which I've forgotten to do. Silly me, because we want it, I want it in manufacturer settings for me because I know how to use a wheelchair. I'm confident I don't have any noticeable disabilities. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna to go to manufacturer settings for me. Okay, perfect. And any other client customer that comes to us or speaks to us on the phone, your settings are gonna be different. We never ever put people in the same settings unless they really need it. Um, you're gonna have dis dis different disabilities, you're gonna have different skill levels, different heights and weights, and that is all changed and controlled by that little device. Right. get the door shut okay so I'm locking out the motors there that means when I go to sit in it it's one it's not going to move but two when I turn the joystick on that's how it can be used electrically um, about to get run over by FedEx so we're going to try and move quite quickly on this we'll get out of his way actually we'll go can we hopefully see that we don't get run over So, I'm just going to get, go to full speed so you can kind of see what it's like at full speed. Not the world's fastest chair, but certainly not a slug by any means. Very manoeuvrable as well, it's very nimble, I can turn. Um, it's very responsive still. 
Um, so when we go up over things like ramps, you want to go dead square on, slow and steady, front two wheels are going to hit at the same time, followed by your back two wheels. I could take that fast, I could have taken it slow, would have been safe as anything. Right, I'm going to check for um, cars. Got, luckily, we've got a good little setup here. We've kind of got everything we need. We've got a bit of grass, we've got some cobbles, we've got curbs, we've got canvas, we've got horrible bumpy rubber terrain. We actually have everything. So, take cobbles, absolutely fine. You can kind of see the gradient of these cobbles, they're pretty nasty. No issues at all. So, some people seem to think it's just our smart chair X, which is ridiculously capable. Every single one of our smart chairs can all do the same things, it's just the X does it that little bit better. But they can all do grass, they can all go up ridiculous slopes, up and down. They can all do exactly the same size curves. They can all come off full curves. They are all the best of what the UK has to offer. It's just they all have a very slightly different use case. Right, so how we do a drop curve, we're going to drop the speed slightly. We want to drive up it slowly and we can do our pulsing method, which is basically a stop start when you're a beginner. It basically means you're not going to overshoot the curve. You want to end up being a couple of inches or so away. That gives you enough momentum to back to go up it um, and have yeah the momentum to go up it, but you're close enough that when the wheels go over, it can press in and gently climb. Next thing you want to do is you want to lean back, you want to stay neutral. You don't want to lean forward and put your weight into the front wheels because then you won't go up the curve smoothly. You'll see the front wheels just compress, they'll gently climb it, piece of cake. Whenever you come off a curb, you want to come off dead square. So get your wheels sorted and you can then come off dead square. It's the safest and the only way to come off curbs and go up curbs. Right, I'm going to do a little camber now. It's absolutely freezing out here by the way. Um, so on this pavement here we've got a right to left camber. That means that your pavement slopes in that direction. That means when you've got a wheelchair that weighs 26.5 kilos with the batteries 23.5 without, it's lightweight. That means it's going to move around a little bit more. That's why you can't have things like carbon fibre chairs or wheelchairs that weigh under 20 kilos out and about on pavements and things like that. They have to be for super supermarkets, shopping centres, beach promenades only, because they will not have the stick, the capabilities, and they are dangerous. Right, so I know my wheelchair is going to veer off this way with the slope. What I need to do is I need to first and most importantly keep momentum running very slowly through my wheels, and then I need to cross steer into this canvas. So that means steering at a slight diagonal, a forward and diagonal across, holding me in position on this camber. I can feel my wheelchair wanting to go off to the right, but I'm I'm basically counter steering it, keeping it where it going where I want it to. You've got this person's driveway here, which makes a natural camber. So technically, my wheelchair wants to go off the side, but I'm cross steering it here, so it doesn't do that. Show you what actually happens if I'm not to cross steer and I let my hands off this. Right, that's what every wheelchair user would have experienced at some time. That's the chair going with the camber. It takes the individual to steer into the camber to cross steer to, act to actually combat and ride over pavements which aren't dead flat. It's not the chair like a dangerous chair doing it. Any electric folding wheelchair in the world does it. You need to be able to combat it as part of learning how to use an electric wheelchair is right so i'm going to come off this square lovely if you go really slow you can literally kind of almost crawl down this if you've got spinal problems you barely even feel like that i didn't even feel that one bit on the back right we're now going to talk about going up curbs forward backwards and max curb climb so we'll go over here this is a nice a big size quarter curb and i'll just talk to you about wheels okay so if you're to take your a good sorry, a good quality wheelchair, a good quality wheels, they will go up a quarter curb at the front. If you split this into four separate pieces, one, two, three, four. The bottom quarter is your maximum curb climb on any given wheel that is good quality and a good quality wheelchair. Same with your back wheel. That equates to a half curb in, uh, curb, curb in reverse and a quarter curb going forward. I'm going to demonstrate both now and the safest way on how to do them. When you do curbs forward, especially of kind of this sort of size, it's imperative that you go dead square and you are about an inch or so away. Because otherwise, if one wheel digs in first, in fact, I don't actually think I'm dead square, but I'll give it a go. I'll try and straighten up. There you go, my wheels dig in and intensely climb it. That was easy, I felt safe as anything. For me to come off this curb now, I need to be square and I'm gonna gently let my front wheels go down first, and then my back wheels can follow. 
If you're going to attempt to come down half curbs or even three quarter curbs or more, you need to get go there at a bit more speed. If you're coming off drops and quarter curbs forward, you want to take it slowly. But I'm going to show you how to go up reverse curve, uh, reverse upper curb now. So you want to start about five six foot away, put your speed up a touch, slam it in reverse. Once your wheels are spun, you're going to stop. You're then going to suss out where the curb is. If you're facing a bit tits up that way, you then want to um, gently pulse in that direction. If you're pacing a little bit that way, you want to gently pulse in that direction. That will, you see I'm gently moving myself in one direction or another, but I'm doing it so gradually and slowly that I'm prepping myself for going backwards. When I'm finally ready, and I feel like I'm square to go backwards, I'm going to change my grip to a pincer grip and I'm literally going to pull it back. My back two wheels are going to hit the same time, followed by my front two wheels. Now I've just gone up the curb in a very slow, very safe manner. My back, as long as your back two wheels hit at the same time, your front wheels will always follow. Right, I'm just gonna, cameraman can come follow me actually. Please. Right, let me just spin myself around. I don't know if you can get low enough that you can kind of see the quality of the camber. So you've got a dip there, a dip there, and then you've got a mixture of drain pipes, loose gravel and grit. You've got a right to left camber. Whenever we've got dips, we want to go straight through them because they act like a real dramatic camber. If I was to go to the top of that dip, it's going to shoot me off towards the road. Um, this is all stuff that will become second nature once you start using the wheelchair in the real wide world. So I'm going to go through this one. There you go, it didn't even move me. I'm going to go through this one, barely move me. And then I'm going to make my way three quarters of the way up this camber, which is usually the safest position. It means if this right to left camber kicks me in, like kicks me out like now, I don't end up in the road, I ended up safely in the pavement. So whatever you do, do not stay well away from that pavement, because if the camber's too severe, it will kick you out. It's just a fact of life. Going around this corner, so it's nice and smooth, nice and nimble. Right, got a downhill camber, which is the worst thing you can possibly come upon for holding. Right, and then come off, same sort of scenario, squarish, and come down. Okay, right, we're going to go do, uh, I hate doing this in the, in the winter, but it shows what the chairs are capable of. We're going to go do a muddy grassy bank. It's annoying just because I don't like cleaning the wheels off afterwards. Um, but it shows you that we've, it's been raining a hell of a lot the last few days. It's boggy, it's long grass, and we're going to go down the slope in a controlled manner, man, manner, manner, and then we're going to go back up it in a controlled manner. And then we might fly off a full curb at the end, just to show off. Not recommended for people that are over kind of well, I'm 13 and a half stone, so I certainly wouldn't recommend it for anyone over 14 stone. Um, but yeah, we have to remember, in a wheelchair, what one person can do, who's 8 stone, 9 stone, 10 stone, uh, is very different from what a 14, 15, 16, or then very even more different to what a 20 stone plus people. If you're 20 stone plus, you should be using this wheelchair as an aid just for getting around pavement, shopping centres. You should be doing nothing fancy, you should be avoiding potholes, you should be avoiding um, you should be avoiding, um, what are they called? Little bumps. Oh, what have I gone back? We went over cobbles and things like that. You don't want to be putting stress and pressure through the frame um, when you are of X amount of weight. Um, you just, yeah, you have to be sensible of these things. Not everyone, sadly, can use these chairs in exactly the same way. Right, I'm going to go down this. Now, I'm going to go into speed level one. Always take hills at speed level one. I'm going to stop, start because that's going to allow my motors to begin to stay in control. And as you can see, it's incredibly boggy. Incredibly wet. Right, there we go. Okay. I'm going to go some grass to show you the taste of it. Some grass, no problem at all. We're filming. We're filming. What is it? I don't know. We're Filming. Let me go up. Um, right. And as you see, that went up there. Right. And he came off the curb. Wasn't the smoothest thing. I've got cars all coming for me from different angles. I've got TNT doing our daily collection. And yeah, that wasn't the smoothest end to the video. I'm not going to lie, but it is what it is. That's 
I have a dead lift tech. So I'm just going to turn around for a quick spin and I'm going to say, we'll see you on the next video. Apologies for the last 20 seconds of that, but it is what it is. <laughs>